Hello, and welcome to the Working Tools Masonic Podcast, where today we will be continuing our discussion of overcoming the seven blunders of masonry with the blunder of fellowship without frivolity with most worshipful brother, Jim Mendoza. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren all, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, a casual conversation around Freemasonry. First, it's important to note that our thoughts and opinions are our own and do not reflect those of our Grand Lodge or respective craft or concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions via our website at theworkingtoolspodcast.com. Today we have with us the Working Tools Masonic Podcast gang. Uh, we have our usual co-hosts, uh, Worshipful Brother Stephen Chung from up in British Columbia in the Yukon, Very Worshipful Brother David Colbeth, uh, and myself, Very Worshipful Brother Matt Apple from here in the Grand Lodge of Washington, and our special guest co-host, Right Worshipful Brother Trevor McCune, who's uh, gra- the Grand Historian of the Grand Lodge of British Columbia in the Yukon. And we'll be having our continuing our discussion of the Seven Blunders with Most Worshipful Brother Jim Mendoza, who is the past Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of Washington. Uh, Most Worshipful Brother Jim, uh, welcome aboard again, and thank you for coming this evening. Thank you very much, It's always a pleasure to be with you guys. Um, we're talking about uh, fellowship without frivolity tonight, huh? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, I enjoy having fun in Lodge. I really do. It's... Uh, you know, we have our serious component. It's a good thing to have. You know, ritualistic openings should be serious. You know, uh, financial discussions should be serious. Balloting, degree work should be serious. But there are some things that we should do to have some fun uh, in in the course of, in the course of our proceedings. Um, I think um, our our Canadian brethren here will will appreciate that this line from their ritual. Uh, that the utmost extension of fraternal feeling and affections which can exist between man and man is expected to be displayed amongst the brethren in a Freemason's Lodge. Because men are social creatures, right? We like to get together. We like to have a good time. And I think it's perfectly fine to do that uh, with it with, you know, again, time and place, obviously, but it's perfectly fine to do that. Um in the overall presentation that we saw at the very beginning of the series, I talked about a couple events that are done throughout our jurisdiction. You know, the the White Sox and Widnight down in Vader, Washington, that raises a boatload of money uh, for 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 the uh, for the families in the, in that neck in that neck of the woods. The lumberjack feed in Newport, uh, up in the up in northeastern Washington, where they chop off your tie uh, while you're wearing it, and the blind guy is the guy who chops off your tie. Uh, <laughs> all in all, of fun time. <laughs> and, you know, there are others, so many things that are out there. And a lot of times they have a charitable purpose. So that's where the fun, so that's kind of where the fun comes in to, into the equation. But it also creates a relaxed, a, a relaxed, envi- a relaxed environment. Um, David uh, kind of wrote me into, uh, uh, in, into, a, in, into an, into a fun thing that happened at an installation of of of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a of a brother of ours, worship brother Sean Sabula. Uh, actually, I was I didn't even know what was going to happen. Uh, I I come walking in. I David, you're here. You tell us, sir. I come walking into you know into the lodge room. It's time for installation. David is that de- David was deputy at the time, uh, and of course he hits me up with he he. David, you tell the story from here. <laughs> I, I went up to Jim and I said, Hey, do you want to have a little fun today? I, of course. He said, yes. And so Jim does an amazing job of his installation program and it's something to aspire to for sure. And, and he always does another good part that some Masons leave out in that, of course, the grandmaster has the ultimate right to do the installation if he, if he chooses. And with, in his absence, the deputy has the next technically by code, the next opportunity to conduct the installation. And then in his absence or deferment, the master of course has the ability and he can defer to somebody else. And, and because Jim says, does such a good job, uh, Jim's asked often to do that. But as part of Jim's opening, of course, he explains that to the audience and says in the absence of the grand master and uh, the, the, I defer to the deputy for the opportunity. And, as Matt maybe knows, maybe he's done all his installations. I don't know, but uh, many times the deputy will say, "Well, I don't want to do that." That's <laughs> I don't, especially if there's no preparation at all. 
and I had, I was a little bit surprised that I hadn't been inquired to, to do any installation, but I had been working on it just in case. And, uh, and so Jim and I had talked about doing that with somebody else and didn't. And, and so I said, Hey, let's have a little fun. Sean's a good friend of ours. And so as if by magic, I had had a, at the time I had a top hat that collapsed and my apron had a big enough pocket inside of it that I could slip the hat inside the apron. And so, you know, he said, well, uh, um, very worshipful De David Koba, deputy of the Grandmaster District 13, would you consider, would you like to perform the installation? And I, I stood up and I said, most worshipful sir, I am completely unprepared. And I slipped the hat out and popped it open and said, but we'll give it a shot. <laughs> and I walked up to the East and did a couple of lines just to pre pre pretend as, as if I was going to do it. And then turned and said, I would never take this opportunity from you to have your good friend, our, our friend, most worshipful Jim continue. And he, but his eyes, Sean's eyes, were as big as saucers he thought we were really going to do this to him uh, but it was really fun so yeah and everybody was laughing and having a good time it was really good it was because it, and it, again it was the perfect time and place and it, it, it created a, it, it created a, a, a you know it didn't detract from the seriousness of the of, of, of the of the day but you know it it, it provided a moment it provided a, mo a moment of fun and uh, you know and i think the cool lesson was that you know here's this guy coming into the chairs right for the very first time and a couple of quote unquote, you know, purple wearing, uh, purple wearing guys come in and we're going to help you out. Look, at most guys going in, most guys being installed master for the, for their first time are nervous as heck to begin with anyway. So let's lighten the load a little bit. Uh, and it, it worked out really well. I do something similar. Uh, and I learned this from uh, uh, Al Jorgensen, another friend of ours, uh, the installation of the junior warden. Uh, where we talk about, you know, that, you know, you are to gather, you, you are to guard, the, you, you are, you, you, in, in your position, you are to guard the brethren against intemperance and excess. Well, I would pause there, take a deep breath, look around the room, and, I'd, and then I'd tap him on the shoulder. I'd say, good luck with that one. Because <laughs> you, again, you, you consider the brethren that are there, right? Because they're all having a good time. Uh, but it's just, it, it's just, a, you know, again, we can have fun within what we do. As long as, you know, we just remember time and place. Uh, you can even take that outside a lodge. We had a, we had a golf tournament that my lodge did. And uh, we had one of the young kids who was a big hitter. He said, would you, would you tee us off? You know? Well, what he was looking, they replaced this golf ball with an exploding golf ball. So here's this kid, takes this big swing, hits that ball perfect, a big old puff of you know, <laughs> explodes right in front of him. It was great. Well, you know, you ha we have to have those. We have to have those moments where we're willing to have fun with each other. Uh, you know, not, nothing mean spirited. Uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about saying, look, at, within the confines of what we do, we can enjoy each other's fellowship. We can enjoy each other's company. We can play a little gag on each other if that's what we wish to do. Uh, again, tasteful. Got to be tasteful, right? You can't, like, you know. Don't you know? Don't replace the charter with a with with with, 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 a, with a picture of, a, of you know of a scantily clad individual. That's not that's not cool. Uh, you know, but you know, do so. You know, but have the opportunity to understand that there's a time and place for everything. Um, or, or a University of Washington poster. I think that happened one year. Yeah. So uh, what was it? <laughs> well, yeah. That you know, because we have a natural rivalry here in Washington, as you know, the University of Washington versus the Washington State University. And uh, true story. Bill Miller wasn't, uh, uh, it was Bill Miller installing Doug Houghton. And he said, if any brother present has any, knows of any just cause of why any brethren should not be installed into office, Cougar Husky is not, is not a valid reason. <laughs> he threw that out there. <laughs> and it was, it worked out really, really well. Um, you know, uh, so it's one of those things where you, you know, you got to find somebody who's willing to play the straight man. If you're going to do that, like David and I, okay, I was willing to play the straight man. No, see, see that sort of thing. Uh, but some people, it, but you, you got to know that some people are it, for those times when, you know, someone's not going to appreciate it. Okay. Back off. But then again, that's you knowing your brethren, right? You've got to know that your brethren are going to be willing to accept that or not, or not accept that as the case may be. Uh, there are times with, when I know the audience, I'll dial it back because I know it's not going to go over well. And there are times when I know that, okay, I know the brethren here. They know me. This is going to work. This is going to work out just 
this is going to work out just fine. Um, Al Jorgensen used to say uh, he would talk about term. He would talk about terms of engagement, and he would talk about when the when that when the hat is on, I am the office. When the hat is off, I am me. Which worked out really well. Uh, though I still remember the one time we did a stop and go meeting. For the for those brethren who don't know what a stop and go meeting, that's where let lodge is open and you start go and you start doing the ritual. And if it's wrong, somebody says stop. Right? Well, in this particular case, Al was grandmaster. He was opening up. Uh, a, a special community. He was. Oh, he was. Gonna, he was opening up a special communication of Grand Lodge for the express purpose of teaching the ritual. All right. He told the Grand Lecturer to stop him when he made a mistake. Now let's think about this for a second. You're a young Grand Lecturer, and a distinguished, a distinguished brother Mason, who happens to be Grand Master, puts his hand on your shoulder and says. I encourage you to, I, I want you to stop me when I make a mistake. That poor grand lecturer. <laughs> good, good luck with that. He would, he would, he would, he, I would, pur- I knew it, I would purposely make a mistake. Right. And the, 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 the poor grand, um, uh, 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 stop. <laughs> well, after about four or five of these, you know, he's like, now, now he's feeling his oats. Now this young grand lecturer is feeling his oats, right? It wasn't me, by the way. He's feeling his oats, and he's stopping left and right. <laughs> <It was just laughs> well, and of course, and- somebody say, "You do know the grandmaster can open in ample form," so he's not making a. So technically, he's not making any mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> it was just one of the, just one of those kind of fun things that that, that you know we 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 we, 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 we that that. That we do to kind of that we do to to to, to lighten to lighten the mood just a little bit, uh, because you know we should, especially in, especially in, especially when we're out in public. Um, some of you will recall. Uh, I think David, you and Matt, you may recall when I was junior grand warden, I had a difficult time telling the time. You know, you know, because you, you know, you know, there you're asked, brother Junior Grand Warren, what is the hour? Well, I figured I would answer it, and I, I would answer back in naval terms. Well, I, I screwed that up ten ways to Sunday, <laughs> and it was just one of those things. But along the same lines, uh, when I when when I when I when I actually when it was time my turn to hit my gavel, my gavel broke the granite cinder block that we used shattered marble just shattered it i'm going oh my god i come back you know after refreshment they'd replaced it with a with a block of cement and a plastic and and a plastic mallet that was now my new gavel okay and everybody think oh my god they're you know he's an elected grand launch officer i'm a brother i'm glad you can have fun with me and i'm I'm glad you can do that Uh, uh i look at this way did you know that grandmasters have bobbleheads in, in the state of Washington? No, I think that's cool. <laughs> it is cool. <laughs> but there are, some people, there are some people who freak out about that. <laughs> you know that junior warden thing you were talking about a moment ago? Um, <clears throat> one of our junior wardens, uh, his favorite thing when he would he'd just pull a, a, a total blank on his ritual work and somebody would ask him what the hour is. And he'd go, you know, it must be the hour when I tell everybody to go eat and drink. (laughs) Full blank. And he would always get a laugh or a chuckle or he'd say, I think it's high noon. Right. Just and you know, whenever he'd come out with one of these these funny uh, sayings or or, or one liners, it was just a, a total memory blank. Right. So. Yeah, but he he made fun of it instead of having a a, a really bad time of it. He'd always make make some sort of light about it, right? Well, and being able to being able to correct, 
in that fun, if you will, or uh, polite manner, whispering in their ear from across the room in front of a crowd. How do you do that, right? Uh, as Jim alludes to our one of our extreme mentors, Al Jorgensen, I remember during an installation, we keep bringing up installations, but that's what our, one of our most public events. And, and the master was having such a difficult time with his obligation, which was supposed to be memorized. And he just was stumbling and stumbling. And so Al gently came down and stood in front of him and he was continuing to stumble. And he just looked up at him in despair, up at Al in despair. And Al said, are you as nervous as I am? And everybody kind of laughed, laughed, you know, and it made light of it, but it gave an opportunity to pause. And then he began to prompt him. And it was a beautiful situation that turned into from what it was. And so being able to, to have that, that fun in there, but also to turn the opportunity into something beautiful. And, you know, fun doesn't necessarily need to be, doesn't necessarily need to be, mean to be jokes. Okay. Fun can also be flipping the script a little bit. Uh, when David was deputy, uh, a typical district meeting can be pretty boring stuff. Let's be honest. You know, you get the report from the deputy, you get the reports from the elected line. Maybe you get some Q and a David flipped the script. David, talk about that. Would you? Well, this isn't that supposed to be a David Joe? No, don't worry. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna nail Matt here in just a second. <laughs> well, my my first year, it was it was kind of a built-in thing. We we wanted to three lodges were going through their uh, their uh, re, their 125th year uh, of their constitution. So we were able to do that reconstitution, which was kind of a unique opportunity. All three of us did it at the same time. It was in a group setting, but the second year I thought, okay, I've got to step it up. I, I think, I think I was getting, uh, some suggestions, some advice from in, in my window, he's right there. The guy in the purple with the, the singing, singing choir behind him. Uh, he was saying, you, you need to step it up, <laughs> I thought, step it up. So, or he was talking about setting the bar high. And I thought oh, it was a pretty high bar. 126th year so, constitution ceremony. Is <laughs> <laughs> so, and also the, the, the grand master at that time wanted to really involve the concordant groups and the youth groups and other things. And so I thought, how can we do this and make it, make it really enjoyable. And so I went to all the different youth groups and all the different youth that I could find and ask them to provide some kind of presentation, musical or music related. And we had uh, a, a couple of different soloists. We had, a, well, for sure a soloist, which was amazing, Mon Sibula, Sean Sibula's daughter, if you didn't see that from the, from earlier in the, show, in the show. She was she did a performance, and our good friend Zane was there. And then we had another, a lodge with their Rainbow Girls. They did a, a performance, and it just was one after that. Had another one, another set of, of kids do their uh, they have stringed instruments and they did a performance and the, one after the other, after the other. And we also had a memorial service that we did. And it was just, I, I, I felt more like a stage director <laughs> that day than a deputy, just making sure all the pieces fell together one after another, after another crammed in as much as I could, but it really, I, I was so fortunate to have all the people that were willing to support and to be part of that. And it did turn out well. Thank you, Jim. And, so and I, I know, Matt, I at, your, at your last meeting, you got credit for pretty much everything. Oh, yeah. So my, uh, uh, during my uh, visit to the Grand Master to our district, that was, I, I emphasized the fact that clearly the role of the deputy is to take credit for everything that happens in his district when he's in front of the Grand Master. So we had a, a series of conversations about how I, I took credit for, you know, when I introduced the, the masters of the lodges, I would take credit for all the things that their lodges had done. It was a, it was a, it was entirely appropriate. I will say that because I, I deserved all that. Credit. But uh, I, I wanted, well, a, I want to pick up on something David just said that the idea of an Al Jorgensen being an extreme mentor, I, I think is, is, I, I just like the idea of extreme mentoring. It sounds like downhill mentoring or something. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but on a serious note, when I first uh, read this as one of the blunders to talk about, I, I will say my first thought was not of rituals or installation or any of that sort of stuff, so much as guys getting together and doing stuff outside of Lodge that was that not necessarily have any purpose. I mean, when I think frivolous, I think uh, uh, meaningless isn't quite the word, but you know... The, if it's a bunch of guys getting together and watching a ball game and, or sitting around and having a few beers or, or grilling some burgers or whatever it is that that kind of event is 
at least as important, in my opinion, as the as a charity dinner or an installation or or that sort of stuff. That just the opportunity for us to bond as as men is is a, an important part of the fraternity. What's what, what makes it a fraternity? And I don't mean fraternity in the you know beer swilling college sense so much as a you know a, a group of like minded men. That's that's how you get to know each other, right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, you know, it, and yes, we, we, we did, you know, we did to do the front end of this talking about what we can do in lodge, but there are things we can do out of lodge as you, as, 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 as David and Matt know, my lodge brews beer. That's our fun thing we do to get together. We go up, we go up to Edmonds uh, and, and there's this wonderful place we go to Gallagher's where you brew and we brew beer and then we give it away. I mean, we literally, we, we, the hospitality when we host one of the hospitality rooms at our grand lodge and we give away the beer and it's like, I can attest to they give it away. (laughs) (laughs) It's, it's just, it's just a, it's just a fun thing. It's a fun, it's a fun thing to do. And of course, you you know, you know, here in Washington, you know, when we're able to, we're blessed to be able to enjoy the arts where I'd be able to enjoy the the, the sporting events. We'd be able to enjoy the outdoors much like you can in, in, in BC. And guess what? I love we. I enjoy spending that time with my brethren. It's a fu- it's it's a fun time, and it, it's it 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 it's it, it, it's just a great time for us to just get together for the, with one purpose, one purpose in view. Let's enjoy each other's company, uh, and 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 let's uh, and and so you know it's you know if you don't have a can. If you don't have like a camp out, which I don't do, because I don't camp. If you don't have a camp out built into your in your into your lodge calendars, um, what is it? Alaska? They have a hunting trip. Uh, one of the lodges in Alaska, um, uh, I think up up in Wasilla, where where John May lives. No, Valdez, where John May lives. They have an annual hunting trip. Well, it makes perfect sense, does it not? I mean, they're they're they're, they're up there in the. When we had the conference of Grand Masters in Kentucky, you'd be surprised. But guess what? We went on a bourbon tour. I know who goes to a bourbon tour in Kentucky. You know, <laughs> and you know what else? Your, we ate chicken. We ate like chicken that? in Kentucky too. I know. We you're stunned that we ate chicken in Kentucky. <laughs> Trevor, do your lodges do activities like that? Do you find them valuable as a part of your experience? Uh, some uh, we we can't pry them out of the bars. <laughs> um, most of our lodges have have outside events. Uh, obviously, not for the last uh, ten months, but uh, hopefully, moving forward, uh, district events uh, where yeah, we'll they'll go to um, uh, to a local pub for uh, for lunch bring the ladies and, and uh, potential candidates. Um, a couple of lodges do that. There's others that um, many of the members are retired, so they have they have coffee clutches <coughs> twice a week. We've got some that uh, there was an attempt to pull together a bit of a paintball. Um, I don't know what you'd call it, squad. Uh, and I don't think that came to anything, but there was a try. So yeah, there's stuff. Yeah. Was it, um, we had a, we had a zoom interview with my lodge did, um, where, um, uh, one of our brethren, he, uh, he has season tickets to the, to the, uh, to the Seahawks. And one of the tailgaters, uh, was from England. Right. Well, he, guess what? He, he ended up joining a lodge in, in the, in, in England. And now he's, and now he's building a, now he's putting together a rugby team. Yeah, again, it's just kind of a fun thing to do. A couple of a few days ago, my lodge had a virtual Christmas party. Normally, we'd be having a live way to virtual Christmas party. We all learned how to make a drink, a, a Christmas margarita. Both we learned how to make an alcoholic and non alcoholic version of it. And then we had an online trivia contest, a Christmas trivia contest, which was a lot of fun. We gave away some money too. Oh, and we and the theme was you had to wear an ugly Christmas sweater. So again, here we are. We're disconnected, right? We found a way to be connected through through yes, through Freemasonry, but having a sense of fun and frivolity as part as part of the deal. Uh, even with our ta- even with the table lodge, we hosted a virtual table lodge in May, and the connective thread beyond the seven toast 
was also the um uh, was also a um uh, a sports trivia contest, which had a Masonic bend to it. So we had I, th I think th six questions because seven tells six questions, and it was like okay, we covered all the major sports, right? And there was a Masonic connection to each question. Like we we asked a question about Tim Horton as an example. <laughs> uh, you know we. You know, we and it was like it was like it was amazing that you know that we could just have this connective thread there. That, but so yeah, so even in this kind of pandemic time, we can still find a way to express that sense of fun and that sense of brotherhood, that sense of uh, that sense of frivolity through fellowship that we can have even in this. That, uh, that, it's, that's it, pretty again, impressive, Jim, because. We've been struggling to try and figure out how to do these things uh, in this time. And uh, you've, you've had some really cool ideas come through there. Uh, but we've been trying to figure out, like we do uh, in, our, in our area, there's a couple of districts that do poker runs. And we've been trying to figure out how we can maybe do one of those and, and still keep socially distanced. But no, nobody's really come to the table with a whole program yet. Um, but we do... Uh, several outdoor things like that up in our area. Um, and we've one of our um, <clears throat> commitments during COVID is to have our social committee get together more and try and figure out a better plan to enrich this part of our, our lodge uh, experience uh, moving forward. Well, if you're looking for something fun, you know, Nathan Tweedy, who was a guest on this podcast, talked about the Baseball Hall of Fame. Yep. He has a similar presentation for the hockey hall of fame hmm. so you might want to give you might want to give nathan a call to see if he might be willing to talk to you guys about masons who are in the hockey hall of fame that would be pretty cool good I mean, idea hey you guys are you guys up there like that hockey though you know so <laughs> yeah. We're gonna, yeah hey we're getting a hockey franchise down here we're excited about it <laughs> that's awesome Yes, unleash the Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna be our team down here. So you know, so so there'll be a natural rivalry. So are we gonna be making bets then with Trevor and and and, and Stephen about uh, about the? Uh, I mean, it's an expansion team, so we're not gonna do well, okay? So <laughs> so you're gonna have to yeah, spot us some points. <laughs> isn't that what they said about the Vegas Knights? <laughs> well, you know, I, right. I I I think that's a lesson learned. I think they want to dial it back a little bit. That's my understanding. So well. <laughs> No, but give I, Nathan. I, I have to admit, I know nothing about hockey. You know that? <laughs> that makes two of us. I I know that there's a thing called Monday night hockey, right? But that's <laughs> all I know. That's about it. Yeah. I thought I, I thought it was just hockey night in Canada, which was pretty much every night. Uh, it could I, be. I remember actually in my first episode, I asked Steve his I he's in Kelowna, and I said, "Oh, the home of the Kelowna Rockets," and he goes, "Yeah, I don't really follow hockey." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, um, I, it's about time for us to to wrap up our discussion here this evening. So uh, on behalf of uh, Trevor and David and Steve and myself, most worship brother Jim, thank you very much again for for coming out to our our show for the this episode. We really appreciate your My pleasure. discussion. My and uh, with that, uh, we hope you all come back again next week for our discussion of charity without commitment. Thank you. Goodbye. Nope. Thanks, guys. That's okay. Uh, I'll cut it out. Nope. <laughs> 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 next week's quantity without on. quality. But by the way, by the way, <laughs> is it legal for somebody to live in Canada and not and not know anything about hockey? Exactly. Come on. <laughs> isn't that that's part of the obligation you take as a citizen, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, well, thank God I was born here and I didn't have to take that obligation. I, I was almost 40 before I realized that there were Canadians who said, hey, <laughs> not where I come from. <laughs> Do you at least go to Tim Hortons? No. I, I, I used to. <laughs> I used to be hardcore Tim Hortons double double guy every day of the week. I would get up on on the weekends, go get Timmy's tea for the wife, coffee for me, and then I went on the keto diet, and I couldn't go to Timmy's anymore because their cream has sugar in it. So I had to go to Starbucks and get heavy cream, and now I've become a Starbucks snob. Oh. On behalf of Seattleites, we would like to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> BC is northern Washington anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs>
Oh! <laughs> All right. well, I'm sorry. What's next topic? <laughs> making notes here. What, what's the name of the next topic? Well, uh, what is the next topic? Charity without uh, education without philosophy. No, sorry. Charity without connection. We'll get to that one finally. Charity, charity without connection. 